Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Today, Ian Arbuck and Ryan Rampersad will be sharing their first impressions of Google Home. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO14. So, Ryan, this episode is a little bit awkward for us because usually with Second Opinions, we like to wait for a little while so that we know that we've had as much experience with the product as possible and also in in especially in the case of like Google Home that it has matured as much as it's going to right that it has all the features that are uh, that that we we can expect from it right or at least you know to have all the features that we were sort of promised and shown yeah and and uh, to actually have it do something for us that we couldn't have done previously maybe with mm. our phones before yeah um, and the only reason, so so yeah, normally with Google Home we would have been waiting longer, but we decided that since this is such a big like holiday gift item, and uh, I hear that the holidays are coming up pretty soon, um, and also I've had uh, several coworkers coming up to me being like, hey, should I should I ask for the Google Home for for Christmas or should I get somebody else the Google Home? Uh, yeah, we we've got to say something about it, right? Yeah, I think so. I think it's important to uh, talk about this one in particular because it's um, sort of like a Chromecast in a way. You know, it's uh, it's not super expensive, mm. It's but it's a significant amount of money for a person to buy for someone, and it could be a waste on that person in right. most circumstances. And also being that it is only like the second of its category that we've ever ever seen right we've only yep. got the amazon echo to compare it to uh and to temper our expectations it's it's pretty important to like f- figure out is this something that people are actually going to want or need in their lives yep um all right so broad overview of the google home it is a little device uh maybe maybe six inches tall right uh cylindrical you set it up on you know a a shelf somewhere in your house and you can talk to it it's got microphones to understand you and then it talks back or it it performs actions for you pretty much pretty much it um so first up probably well one of the most important things about it is can it actually recognize your voice right because that's the only interface that you've got with it if it can't understand what you're saying it's not going to be able to do its job at all yep Um, so in my experience, it's been understanding me most of the time. Uh, we've been having some weird false positives when like, cause we set it up in the living room. Mm -hmm. And so like people will be watching television and apparently something is said on the television that sounds nothing like the hot word and it'll just badoop, like I'm listening. And we all look at it like, what? That wasn't for you. Yeah, I've had something kind of similar to that, but it's happened when we were talking. So we'll Mm. be sitting, um, we have it set on the kitchen table. So that's sort of, you know, our our layout sort of all open. So we don't have really discrete rooms on the main floor, but Mm. it's on the the table so that we can hear it anywhere. And we can just be talking about stuff and we don't say the word, okay, Google at all. And suddenly it'll just start listening for no reason. Oh, Ryan, I was trying to avoid saying the actual hot word. <laughs> oh, no, but I'm going to do it as many times as possible. <laughs> oh, man. So, if yeah, people's phones or whatever get activated, all your fault. It is. Fault. Now, I did uh, notice that it has a lot of trouble with my brother Marshall's accent because mm-hmm. uh, he has recently arrived from India. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I, it just wasn't designed... Uh, for that, especially, I think, because we have, wait, is it only available in the U.S., or do they have different regions? I don't know. Uh, yeah, but e- either way, it's it's calibrated with uh, various U.S. accents in yeah. mind, I believe. Mm-hmm. That so. makes sense. Uh, the types of things that it can do are also pretty important. Um and this this was a big factor in me deciding to get it right away because, well, A, I was pretty curious about it, right? Because we've never seen something quite like it before. 
Um, but then also I knew that because I'm already drinking the Google Kool-Aid that I, it would probably be able to do stuff for me. Right. Right. Exactly. That it would integrate really well with the Google ecosystem that we already had established. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like compare that with the Amazon Echo where, especially like as a media playback or, or media control device, uh, it was very important to me that it use Google's systems right because i use google music for listening to music i use youtube all the time um you know i don't use amazon music and uh and that's that's kind of an unfortunate reality of the world that we live in right now is that uh amazon and google really really hate each other's guts and won't put their own services on each other's platforms uh because like yeah amazon video is one of the one of the main places that I go to for videos, right? Uh, other than Netflix. Um, but it's just, it's straight up not available on either Google Home or Chromecast or anything like that. So I think one of the interesting things about the Google ecosystem and the Amazon ecosystem is there's nothing really about you other than what you've purchased on the Amazon system. Mm-hmm. Whereas on Google, you know, it has all of your emails, all of your search history, all of your YouTube stuff. Right. Uh, uh, countless pictures, uh, you know, documents. It has everything. Mm-hmm. So if you already have a Google footprint, it makes sense to use this, but only assuming that it can do something with those things. Right. Yep. So let's talk about how well it does those. Um, yes. First off, the the media playback aspect of it it does it really, really well. Mm -hmm. And especially if you've got multiple other Chromecast devices in your house already. Uh, So in my case, we have a Chromecast audio hooked up to some speakers in the kitchen, and we have a, an Android TV hooked up to the television in the living room. And uh, Google home can detect that those are on your network, of course. And, and mainly when you are playing things from Google home, uh, you'll tell it, what you want to play, and then where you want to play it, right? Uh, If you don't tell it where you want to play it, it defaults to itself. Um, And the really nice thing, uh, I believe this existed before Google Home came out, but I didn't know about it until I got it, is that you can tie multiple Chromecast audio devices Mm -hmm. together into groups. Uh, And of course, the Google Home counts as a Chromecast audio device for the for that purpose so we now have a speaker group called downstairs speakers uh that includes the chromecast audio in the kitchen and the um google home in the living room so if i am playing something and i want to be able to walk from one room to the other without losing that then uh, i can easily cast something to both of those speakers at once um right. and, that, and that's not just for like times when i'm telling it to play music out like that I'm speaking to the Google Home. Also if I'm casting some from one of my own devices like my phone or my or my computer or something, uh, I can cast it to that group as well. Mhm. So I love that. Love that. So of course then there's also uh Google Music and YouTube integration. So mm-hmm. how how do you so you you have Google Music, right? Yep. Yep. So if you didn't have Google Music, how how does the system work for you? So they had a couple of third-party options available uh, when it first launched, and that was Spotify and Pandora. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you didn't use one of those three music services, you were pretty much out of luck. Uh, I believe that now that they have opened up the uh, the API, I I think that other streaming services are going to get on board but really we have to wait and see so yep. if 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 you use something else and it, we're still not sure if you're going to be able to get service right so uh in my experience um i don't have google music even though i have youtube Red, it just never uses it i guess i don't know it always says that it's making a playlist from google uh wait what what your account should definitely have access to Google Music. All access, well, I, then. I agree, but it never uses it. Oh, well, yeah, because you can set up which one you, you prefer. So if you set up, like, YouTube Music as the main one, then it would be doing it from that app. Hmm. Well, I never did it. It did it. That's okay. okay. Um, 
But I really like that it can um, also play the little uh, podcast news things. Yes. Uh, it's one of my favorite features. I like doing that when I come home every day. Uh, I like how it's configured by default to um, you know, do a few different sources of news. It's really simple. You just ask it, tell me the news, and then it does. It's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have the news briefing set up as the the end of like my uh, good morning mm. um, uh, preview to my day, right? Yep. And and the the really nice thing about this is that I it's it's helped me to find news related podcasts that I normally wouldn't ever have come across, right? And uh, and it only ever will play the latest episode from each one, right? So I I don't even have the option of going back and right. and listening to yesterday's news um whereas like with with a traditional podcast listening app it's very very easy to like fall behind by a day or two and then you've suddenly got five episodes I- waiting for you and they're just staring you in the face and it's like yep yeah that happens a lot uh now notice that at launch, YouTube was the only video service that was available, um, and Netflix has now, like, as of just a few days ago, uh, has been added to the Google Home app, but even though I linked my account to it, it still hasn't worked for me. Every time that I ask it to, to play something from Netflix, it says that something's gone wrong. Please try again when you're ready. Oops. Yeah. So, I, I think... I think that that just means that like the Netflix integration hasn't been activated for my account yet, uh, but I have gotten the update for the app that will let it work eventually. I don't know. Or, or the servers are just down. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That seems like a, a weird thing. Uh, and yeah, so just like with the music ones, we're going to have to wait and see which video services become available. Uh, although I think we can safely assume that Amazon will not yeah pretty much (laughs) so Uh, so these services are great and all but what about the other google services so like what about adding stuff to like your grocery list sure yeah so it integrates with google keep for a shopping list uh you can you can ask it to like add items to your shopping list but you can only do one list yep it, it you can't you can't have it make a list for purposes other than shopping and when you when you do that, it creates that list with a really like awful name in your Google Keep, right? It's like the Google Home Assistant Shopping or Grocery List or something like that. And um, and so uh, of course after we created that list the first time by out out loud by talking to Google Home, mm-hmm. uh, I shared that list with Savannah in Google Keep, and uh, and all hell has broken loose because it's like for some reason trying to synchronize it between two accounts is way too much for the Google assistant. That's so and weird. It is really weird. Like sometimes we'll, we'll check off a, an item and then like a day or two later, it'll show up again on mm-hmm. one of our devices, but not on the other person's account. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's really strange. Huh, um, wow. So there's some bugs to be worked out in that one. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. So what about, uh, what about, like uh, asking the Google Home to show you all your pictures of your dog. It can actually do that now. Google That's Photos, good. Yes, Google Photos is now uh, one of the things that, that is integrated. Um, I did, the only thing that I've done so far with it was uh, I asked it to show me pictures from Stockholm. Yeah. And, uh, and it it had a pretty generous radius on that. Like mm. I was seeing uh, um, pictures from a ski resort that we were at that was that is well outside of the stockholm area but it was still in southern sweden so close enough yeah close enough yeah well so what other google services would we like to see integration with you know it's kind of tough because it's got to be things that can either be spoken out loud or or cast to another, like cast to a screen, and then you don't have to control it a whole lot. Right. Um, so reminders is a big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, Setting it, timers, it does, really nice. It, so it does pretty well with like accessing reminders that I've already set. Um, if I have a reminder coming up in my day, it will tell me about that during my morning briefing. 
Um, but unfortunately, you cannot set reminders using the Google Home yet. Weird. It's a, yeah, it's a pretty weird uh, limitation there. Um, yeah, obviously with like photos, when you ask it to show you some photos of a certain category, it will choose those and then it'll start cycling through a slideshow for you automatically. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, you're not going to have a whole lot of control over exactly which photos are going to show up there and how quickly they're going to go. Uh, and who wants to sit there going like, okay, next picture, next picture, every, you know, yeah, that that would would be be really bad. Yeah. So um, b- beside all those things, I think I think for me the biggest limitation of Google Home so far is that it only works with one account. Yes, definitely. Definitely. I can't believe that I didn't write that into our show notes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I we typically only have two people here, but I know where you live, you have dozens of people in and out of your house every day. Oh yeah. Um and 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 obviously everybody there would be registering their Google account with your Google Home to to have functionality and it's just so limiting to only have one account tied to it. So I know that my mom listens to music with it sometimes. She'll just ask it to play some song. Mm-hmm. And it's tied to my account and because it's defaulting to YouTube for some reason for everything, her songs are now in my YouTube history and whenever I use YouTube, which is frequently I see a bunch of music videos for music I don't listen to. Yeah, and that's that's kind of uh, reminds me of back before Netflix had the multiple different profiles per account right. kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I hate it. I hate it when somebody else who has access to my account goes and uses my profile for yep. watching Netflix stuff. It skews I, all the results. Ah, oh God, I have to go out and, and remove all that stuff from my history. At least you can do that. That's good. Um, but, like, I mean... Think about Google Home also has more implications than just a Netflix account would, right? right? Because people could ask it questions and hear answers based on my my stuff, right? Um, so yeah, personalized personalized like answers for me, um, possibly pulling from like my email or something like that. Yeah, search email, history, yep, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um, so that yeah, you you got to make sure that you trust the people who uh, are around you, um, and I'm and I'm trying to puzzle out why they don't have multiple account uh, support because on Android, one of the things that you can do for smart unlocking your phone is having it recognize your voice, and then people whose voices sound different from yours can't unlock your phone just by saying the hot word, right? Mm -hmm. So why can't Google Home recognize different voices? Yeah, there could be a number of different reasons. You know, maybe the microphones just aren't strong enough to fully differentiate the way that people say words at any appreciable distance or they just don't have enough processing power locally to figure that out enough places to store it who knows like i'm sure they could come up with some plausible reason sure uh but yeah and and i guess the other thing about it too is if they did have multi-people usage of it they would have to do sort of a more elaborate setup process probably yeah which is what um, we're going to talk about now, I think. Yes, the setup process was phenomenal. I've never seen something easier than this. Because uh, you, well, especially if you have an Android device. I'm, I doubt that it would be so simple with a- iOS. Sure. Because um, with, uh, with Android, when you first plug in the Google Home, uh, it just makes itself into a Wi-Fi hotspot, I believe. And yep. You connect to that with your Android device and uh, the phone just basically gives it your Wi-Fi password. Mm-hmm. And yep, just like your, a Chromecast. And your account information. And then, boom, uh, it goes and connects to that uh, that that uh, Wi-Fi network. And your Google account is all set up already. And you can start talking to it. It was that easy. It was. Compare that to uh, a few days later, I got the Nest uh, thermostat and i had to turn that dial around oh. to get to different letters to type in my long wi-fi password terrible well you know you, you can, can you contrast the nest and the chromecast and now the google home and you can really tell that the nest was formulated conceptually like five years ago 
Whereas mm-hmm. the Google Home was like, yeah, you know, it was made in the last year or two. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, one of my other complaints about the Google Home is that, especially given that I live in a in a house with five other people, it's pretty dozens. Hard. It's pretty hard to use it when there are other people down here in the communal spaces, right? Because, mm-hmm. for one thing, other people are making a bunch of noise yep. and being obnoxious. But also, it's it's a lot more obtrusive for me to ask this machine something and get an answer back because then, like, everybody else is... Disrupted by it. Disrupted by it, yeah. Yep. Uh, whereas if I just do it with my bloody phone, it's going to be nice and quiet and, and nobody else has to worry about it. Yeah, and I and I sort of feel the same way. So you know, there's only really two people here, but um, you know, if 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 either of us are watching TV, and um, you know, one of us decides to try using it, uh, either it can't hear us because the TV's on, or saying OK Google, or pretending to say OK Google, and it it doesn't matter. It just it it's not um it's not perfect in its in its utility because it it involves using your voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only way to solve that really is to not use it. <laughs> just just use your phone, I guess, because it does the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, is there anything that the Google Home does that we couldn't already do with our phones? So, I think so. Clearly, one of the nice things that the the Google Home can do for a normal person is deliver them those news podcasts, like. That takes no effort, and it's super easy. There's no app that's installed by default on Android that really like makes it effortless. Right, right. Like you can do it through Play Music now, but it's weird and bizarre. That is the opposite of effortless. That's what I'm saying. Like I said, um, and then I think uh, what about the other one? The like getting the weather really easy. You can mm-hmm. do that. There's no app on Android installed by default that gets you the weather. Until you search for weather and then install it. I have found that the Google Home is pretty nice for things where I want to usually get a brief piece of information and my hands are tied up doing something else. Sure. Right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, the weather, especially when I'm, like, tying my shoes about to walk out yep. the door, ask it, what's the weather like outside so I know what kind of jacket I need to put on. Yep. I think, um, you know, just, just for general questions that you have um you know you know if you if you're uh you just want to know some trivia i guess as simple mm-hmm. as that but you don't really want to use your phone for it because you're doing something else you can just ask it but of course that that also borders into the territory of disturbing others but it's still useful for that there the uh are you feeling lucky game is pretty darn fun if you've it is got fun. a group of people sitting around um, I, I don't like that it gives everybody secret nicknames uh, yeah, I think that's. I think they did that to avoid it ha- uh, mispronouncing literally everybody's name. Yes, I agree. I, I understand, but I still don't like it. Uh, my, my some of my students have really taken glee in referring to me as Clementine since uh, that in the video that I posted of the yeah. "Are You Feeling Lucky" game. Yep. It uh, it called me Clementine. That is pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I brought it to uh, work one day. And uh, <laughs> the uh, the people at work abused it heavily. Yeah, so that was the, fun. Some of my students were trying to get me to bring it into school, and I was like, I don't think so. No. Nah. Yeah. I mean, if you did, you'd attach it to a clean Google account. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. I yeah. I definitely. I mean, I see like the the potential in the technology because yep. it 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 could like. So the the whole point of a Chromecast is that it took away the interface from a television and put it onto your phone, which mm-hmm. is an interface that was already pretty uh, pretty well established, right? And it was much more flexible to be on the phone because unlike the screen, you manipulate it with your hands mm-hmm. and not a remote with only four directional buttons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and like the only thing that is more flexible and and quicker and easier than finding um something on your phone is to either talk out loud to quote unquote a person right who will do it for you who will start playing whatever you want for you 
or to just think it and have it happen. And obviously we can't just think it and have it happen yet. We didn't, yet. We, we haven't gotten to that point. Um, but yes, just speaking it out loud, like, Hey, I want to watch the clone wars on Netflix because, uh, you know, I have to get through that show, but I hate it. <laughs> well, what a, what a strange and obscure thing to need. <laughs> Yeah, well, so, I'm, a, so, I'm a Star well, Wars completionist. So, you know. so overall, so do you feel like it's you know worth the price currently? Uh worth. Uh, well, yeah. So you also have to take into account that it is just straight up a, a pair of speakers hooked up to a Chromecast, um, which adds to its value significantly, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I yeah I still don't think that a hundred and thirty dollars is the right price for it. Mm-hmm. So what if it was at its uh, Black Friday pricing at ninety nine? That's yeah, that's a lot better. That's better. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, I think it is better. It still seems like it doesn't do a whole lot of stuff right. for a hundred dollars. When a Chromecast is is approximately thirty five dollars, I mean, it's a pretty tough sell. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess my Chromecast don't talk to me, but it could, you know, just be eighty dollars, and I'd be okay with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you tried out any of the services that have come out recently since they since they opened up the API? No, I have not. Okay, uh, I tried to play this submarine game. It was awful. Of course, I there is one cool one that's called Quotery, where you can ask it for like a quote related to some topic or a quote uh, by a famous person. That's cool. And it will oblige. Yeah, that was pretty nice. I uh, I had it go through several Mary Oliver quotes. Hmm. So, um, yeah, so they're kind of hit or miss. Some of them are going to be good. Some of them are going to be bad. Uh, and we just got to wait for for some more to come out. Though though there is the problem, of course, of discoverability there, right? Oh, because, absolutely. Because it has no interface on its own. So how are you going to find out when there are new interf- or when there are new services available? Uh, the only way right now is to go into the Google Home app on your phone and look through that list of services to see which ones there are. Right. And if, and of course, if, if there are multiple people using it, only one person might have that Google Home app. Mm, and so mm-hmm. then those other you know, people will have no clue about the additional functionality that they could maybe use. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. If only they had multiple account support. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. So I'd say, yeah, a, a lot of caution is still warranted when it comes to the Google Home. Uh, come check back in with us in a, in a few months when we put up a proper review of it. Yeah. And I, and I, I guess I'll say for for this holiday season unless the person is asking for it specifically or already purchased one don't buy it for them and then uh also uh, aside from our upcoming full and complete review in a few months when it does more stuff also stay tuned for the next google io because presumably they'll add a bunch more apis and maybe it'll do more sure yeah and that's in june that's in June. So that's a while away. Yeah. It'll be warm then. That's all that matters. So thank you for listening to this First Impressions, everybody. Uh, this has been Second Opinion. If you, Since this is our review show, if you have anything that you would like to review, uh, please get in contact with us. You can either use the contact link on the show notes page. Once again, that is thenexus.tv slash SO14. Um, or you can contact us on Twitter. We are at the Nexus TV. Is there a yes. TV at the end? Yes. Yes. At the Nexus TV. <laughs> um, I am Ian Arbuck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian Arbuck, or check out my website at ianarbuck.com for other stuff that I make. And of course, you can find me Ryan Rampersad, especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amari, and of course on my website RyanRampersad.com, where I do absolutely nothing. Okay, Google. Have a good one. <laughs>